Am I a Pharisee? Part 8. Hi, welcome to today's little lesson. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're a regular viewer, you know that we're currently in a little series of lessons as we work our way verse by verse through Matthew chapter 23. Uh, Matthew was apparently inspired by the Holy Spirit to record Jesus' detailed denunciation of the scribes and the Pharisees. And it's very easy to think to ourselves that none of this has any application to me because, of course, I am not a Pharisee. I'm a Christian, you know. Uh, and when you take the letter of the law, the, the exact things that Jesus said, it, you know, you can say, well, yeah, that's no application to me whatsoever. Uh, you know, because uh, I'm not doing what they're doing. But if you look a little bit deeper into, you know, the, the, the principles that surface in Jesus's criticism of the scribes and Pharisees, you can find some application. And we've been finding some application to many of us, this guy included. So we're going to continue in that vein today. So we're in Matthew chapter 23 and verse number 16. Let's look at something that would be very easy to wiggle our way out of if we take the letter of the law, but we take the spirit of what Christ said. Oh my goodness, yikes. We're, we're many of us are in deep trouble. So Matthew 23, verse number 16, woe to you blind guides who say, whoever swears by the temple, that is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obligated. And we could add there, he's obligated to, to keep his vow or his word because this was the practice the Pharisees had. They'd make a vow, swear by something else. I swear by the whatever, and I will do thus and so. But they had a little rule there that if you swore, uh, you know, by the temple, you didn't have to keep your vow, or your promise. But if you swore by the gold in the temple, then you were obligated. And it reminds me of a little game we had when I was a kid that we had this idea that it was okay to lie as long as you had your fingers crossed behind your back. And so you tell somebody something, you make a promise, and they get all excited because it was some good promise. And he goes, ah, fingers crossed, you know, so that somehow relieved us of the responsibility to keep our word. And so it's just, a, you know, uh, it's an excuse, a justification for not telling the truth, for lying. And the Pharisees had this very sophisticated system. Uh, Jesus goes on to, to elaborate on other examples of the same thing. Uh, here's what they would say, Matthew 23, verse 18. Whoever swears by the altar, that's nothing. But whoever swears by the offering on it, he is obligated. And then, you know, <laughs> it goes on. But Jesus points out something here. And here's the beginning of the spiritual principle that surfaces, verse number 19. You blind men, which is more important, the offering or the altar that sacrifice, sanctifies the offering. Therefore, whoever swears by the altar swears both by the altar and everything on it. Whoever swears by the temple swears both by the temple and by him who dwells within it. And so Jesus is just you know, writing their very wrong thinking in this regard. And it comes down to um, their perception of what was important, or maybe we can say their perception of what was really valuable. Um, you know, the gold in the temple was more valuable to, in their minds than the temple itself, which that's wrong, right? I mean, because if the temple is a place where God's presence is kept, and, and um, as Jesus, Jesus said, um, you know, whoever swears by the temple swears both by the temple and by him who dwells in it. So the, the, the greater value was not the gold. The gold was really of no value in comparison to the person in the temple, the Lord God Almighty. You know, it was his house during the old covenant, as it were. And again, you, Solomon at the dedication of that temple said, we know we can't confine you into this temple. You're bigger than the whole universe. You've made the whole universe. But yet still, you know, there was an aspect of God's presence there. So it shows that the Pharisees had their focus on the wrong thing. And they didn't value what was really valuable. In this case, they valued gold over God. 
and, and not just, you know, of course, they weren't clinging to, to, to like gold coins so much, but the gold in the temple, the, 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 the vessels of worship and so forth that were, were, were made of gold. And oh boy, you know, if you, uh, if you swear by uh, the temple, that's nothing, God's house where God lives. But if you swear by the gold in the temple, then you're obligated. And then the same mixed up thinking concerning the sacrifice and the altar, a misplaced value. And so I think there's application there to us. And you can probably go a million different directions, you know, of misguided values. But here's the fundamental question that we need to ask ourselves. Do I value, do I consider sacred what really is sacred according to God? Okay, and there's a lot of Phariseeism going on in the church in that regard. Uh, I, I would say that one of them, uh, it, you know, again, we're not doing any of the swearing stuff, so that has really no application. We know we're not supposed to be swearing. We know our yes is supposed to be yes, and our no is supposed to be no. Jesus said that in the Sermon on the Mount. But we value certain things and make them much more sacred than you'd ever find in Scripture, and they usurp the sacredness of other things that God said are extremely sacred, okay? Like him, like him. Um, oh, we're in the church building now. Let's, you know, quiet down, behave ourselves. We have to put on kind of our church mode, shift into church mode. And we walk into, you know, God's house, as we sometimes even hear pastors. It's amazing that they say this, you know, but welcome to God's house. You know, isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord, you know? Now, you know what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm, imagine, I hope, I'm hoping you're thinking it too. Because under the new covenant, the temple of the Holy Spirit, one of the temples, is our own bodies. And we're always in our bodies. And our bodies are supposed to always be made a living sacrifice unto God. But, but you know, so, so here's a temple of the Holy Spirit right here. How come I act so special when I go to church, but every other time, you know, I'm not really valuing what God values, God himself. He's not living in a church building, as a matter of fact. Under the old covenant, sure, his presence to a certain degree was kept in the temple, but that's old covenant, folks. The temple is no longer a building in Jerusalem. The temple is all the believers in Jesus Christ, individually and collectively. And so, you know, how come we're, we're saying or implying or acting that, oh, it's really important to be, you know, very sanctimonious when we go to church and be thinking about God there, but when we walk out the doors, ah, <laughs> great to be away from God and out of his territory, you know, now we're free once again. Oh my goodness, that is not a Christian thought whatsoever. Okay, well, we're out of time for today, but something to think about, okay? Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you next time.